Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we will be installing the Universal Philison radio, Android radio that has a rotatable screen. And this is the 2013 Jeep Patriot. So what we're gonna need to do is take off this dash panel and then we'll unplug everything and then have a clean setup so that we can start plugging everything back in for the Philison radio. Okay, so your vehicle might be a little bit different, but for the Jeep Patriot, it's quite simple to take this whole thing off. I have one of these fancy little tools here, and if it's plastic, you're not gonna be uh, chewing up too much of the metal here. So you can see you can get really good right underneath it and try to find any of those tabs and kind of pop them loose like that, all the way around like that. And you can see how simple that is for the Jeep Patriot. Now I do have some climate control cables here that I'm gonna to have to unplug. And then there you have it, you can set it aside. So that's quite simple. I really like how simple and fast the Jeep is. So here's the inside of it. We're gonna to have to take these screws off, but I'm gonna take this out off camera and then show you guys on the inside how we're gonna hook it up, okay? All right, as you can see, we've got everything out of here. So before we start plugging things in, let's take a look at our interface manual real quick because it does talk about programming and a few things about what you need to do before you start connecting things. So first step, open the driver's door and keep it open during the programming process. Turn the ignition on. Connect now the C13, CH13 harness to the interface. So this is going to be our interface. We're going to take the harness that we have from wiring it up previously. And if you need that video, go ahead and look in the description and you'll find it, how we wired up and soldered everything. And then to the appropriate wiring harness in the vehicle. Okay, there we go. And then we have to connect it to the radio. There's a couple things we have to do on this. So first is we have to do the radio programming and then we have to do the vehicle programming all with that, inter that green interface box. As you can see, the main connector goes here. You want to push it down, but just make sure you have that in there really good. Otherwise, it's not going to work. One more thing I want to plug in, though, is this cable here. That's for the parking detection and the reverse camera input, that yellow cable there. That will go in this slot here, the far or the very first one, basically. And then I'm going to plug in the cable to the rear camera. Now this isn't stock, so this is aftermarket, but this is the cable for the camera. And that goes here where you see reverse camera input. Okay, plug that in. I just kind of want to have pretty much what my setup's going to be like before the programming starts. All right. So as you can see, the radio does turn on once you plug everything in. Now, going to be hard to show you this. There's going to be a light over here. It's red flashing right now. So what we need to do here is I think we need to restart it because we took too long to do it. So I unplugged it. Once you unplug that, the radio goes off. So if you don't get anything on your radio, it's because you don't have your interface box connected. Kind of going outside the directions, it's a little bit challenging because it's not considering all of the other wiring setup. So once we have it plugged in, locate the volume up button behind the steering wheel, which is right here. And what we're going to do is tap the volume up button at a heartbeat pace until the LED stops flashing. So the LED is down here at the bottom left corner. It's gonna be flashing once I plug this in, but keep pressing this until the LED stops flashing. The LED will flash green and red while the interface programs the radio to the steering control. Then once that's programmed, the LED will go out and produce a pattern which will identify the radio type installed. Then the last step here is it'll automatically on its own, again, quickly flash green and red while the interface program itself to the vehicle. The once program, the LED will go out again, then turn solid green, turn the ignition off, then back on, and then we test the function. So let's go ahead and see. I'm gonna plug it in and start pushing the up button. And do I see? Okay, starting to blink red. Okay, now it's blinking slow red. I think it stopped flashing. Now it's green. You guys can't see it, but now it's solid green. Okay, so after you followed the steps to get your programmer to work correctly, what you want to do is hit this app button down here at the bottom right and control. I already played around with it a little bit just to kind of show you what you need to do. 
What you need to do is press the and hold the button on the steering wheel into the learning state, basically. So I'm going to hit the up button here, for example, and you'll see the top right there says, now please select learning function button. So you hold this up, hit, now that's going to be my volume. I'm going to hit the volume and then while keeping your hand on there, hit this check mark down at the bottom. And now you can see that the audio is going up and down. Here's down. I sent this, I set the center button to be the source. So now every time I push it, it switches all the different sources. And over here on the left, I changed it as your next or previous song. So that's how you get the steering wheels controls to work now on the Jeep. So I'm glad that works. Now we just have to figure out how to make this audio come on. Okay, so here we are back into the Jeep. If you remember earlier in the video, I wasn't able to get any sound, but this time I believe we fixed it because we do have an amplifier and we had to wire up the wires accordingly. So let's go ahead and try to connect this all and see how things work. So, so let's go ahead and try to plug in some things here. Right now, this is my rear view camera aftermarket that I've already had pre-wired in the Jeep. You're gonna take that jack and plug it into the Phyllisons harness here that's called reverse camera input. Easy like that. So that's taken care of. We'll try to throw some wires down in there. And this is climate. We don't need that right now. This is an old microphone that was in the previous radio. We're gonna need the new microphone. You can wire this up however you like. Right here is the other microphone. And this microphone came with Phyllisin. So we'll remove this and rewire this through there whenever we get this installed and kind of see, make sure that's working. But I'll let you guys do that on your own. I don't need to show that. And then, but all of these other cables here, we're not gonna use. These are all your auxiliaries and things like that. I just need this microphone so that you can have voice commands. And that's going to be plugged into the longest one here, the one on the far right to fit this cable. Just goes in there like that. And let's take a look and see what else we need. Here we have some USBs. This, the, this one is called the phone link USB, the single one here, the four pin USB basically. And that one, you can only put these in certain slots because each slot is its own size. So that goes there. And then we have a six pin USB cable. And I'm not exactly too sure what this will be used for. Probably also your car plays or your charging cables. If you would need it or want it, go ahead and put it in. I guess I'm just gonna put it in because you never know if you're going to use it. And it's a six pin, so that will go right next to the one we just installed. But I think it's easy just to keep it available even if you're not gonna use it. In case you do wanna use it, you don't have to take everything all apart again. This one is a basic USB-C to USB-A cable. Don't really know where it goes. I don't think it goes anywhere because there's no USB spot. I think that you just have an extra one now. By the way, we have the GM, the GPS already installed here into this antenna slot. And I got this additional antenna here, which goes into the 4G Plus, and your SIM card, if you choose to have a data one, goes into this slot. You will need an adapter if you're using those small micro SIMs, but also Phyllisen said that more than likely the 4G or the data SIM card will not work here in the United States for some reason, even though they sell it here. But I thought since I had an extra one, what the heck, let's go ahead and try it and see. The, uh, the phone service I use is Google Fi, and I can use that all over the world. So I'm wondering, you know, maybe it has some kind of special protocols or things like that that you can actually hear things on. So this is the main wire harness that we worked on earlier. Obviously that goes here. I think we are ready to go ahead and plug this in and set it inside the dash. Here's everything we need for the main harness, Just tucking things in here. Oh, by the way, connect your antenna wire in here. You will need an adapter if you have this same Jeep as I do, this little pigtail adapter for the antenna because the original antenna is one of these jacks that go into the OEM radio. Sorry, I also forgot to connect this cam this cable here that I just plugged in my reverse camera in, my rear camera in. That goes here in the very first slot. The other two we're not gonna use. Okay, now we have that. For the screen, you have this basic ribbon cable. It's not ribbon, I guess, but a little connector cable here. This, you can only plug this in correctly one way, so you'll figure it out. And you kind of snap it into place there. All right, here we go, guys.
Online. As you can see, we do have audio. And the door speakers are working. I can feel them vibrating. Hi, I'm Let's go into Harden. settings real quick. Sound. I need to turn off this beep. It's annoying. Okay. Now let's double check some radios here. Now it is still pretty loud on volume number one, but at least we have audio. I'm going to go ahead and get this set up. You guys go ahead and get it set up how you want. And then I'll probably come back within a month or so with just a, a general overview or review or feedback of what I think about it. And after playing with it a little bit, maybe learn some more tricks. For example, this audio that is super loud when you're in even just one, okay? Also, let's check really quick the reverse function. See if my rear camera comes on. I have my foot on the brake. We are in reverse and there you go. That's what's nice is it automatically goes into the rear camera view when you're in reverse. If you turn left or right, obviously this vehicle never had that in the first place. So it's aftermarket. It's not going to turn your left and right. But if your vehicle did have that, that should work hopefully for you. What's this here? I guess to adjust the brightness which is nice. You can adjust the brightness and the colors and okay, that works. Put it back in park. Thanks for watching guys. I hope this helped you figure it out, helped you guys understand how the wiring and everything works with the Jeep 2013 Patriot. And so if you like this video, go ahead and click like and subscribe. And if you don't like this video, go ahead and click the thumbs down button twice.